place like this, huh? I see. She was aware of it, at least. え、<笑> Like a double, it felt like a double, uh, <laughs> it had like a double meaning there. Tried to scare her a little bit with the idea of an accident or murder from the past, but you disguise it as a joke. Although probably, Keiichi probably didn't think of it like that. Yeah, you know, like, uh, since you were having such a hard time uh, finding Colonel, Colonel Randy, I was about to say Sanders, I cannot say that due to copyright, but uh, maybe, maybe we can help you with uh, Colonel Randy? I mean, I wouldn't see a reason why we cannot help you. Well, I felt my quota for today. If I don't see you right now blush at least once a day, then I'm not getting my daily required nutritional intake. <laughs> it could be all of it or none of it. No one will ever know. It is all trapped inside a cat box. I just ignored her bewilderment. で、どこだよ、ランディ君は。あ、ごめん。ほら、この隙間から見える。Alright, well, let's see. Randy was sideways, surrounded by boards and other construction materials, like they were caging him inside. According to Rena, it wasn't like this yesterday. It seems as though another illegal dumper came yesterday. Dumped again, and now he's buried like this. Okay, so... I guess the explanation is that there is some asshole out there that is piling stuff here, even though... When it comes to... Rules and such, you are not allowed to dump all this, like, right over here. That's... that's illegal. Unless... Okay, maybe it's a little bit uh, too early for me to talk about all this. You know, it's kind of unfair. Like, sometimes it's kind of unfair, like, at the beginning of a story to think of this as a murder mystery and all that, given that we don't really have much to work with. And uh, I'm, like, right here just piling my mind with imagination, like... Like an old madman or something like that. Like, <laughs> think of aliens and stuff like that. Of course, I'm not gonna think of witches and all that. That's for Yumineko, and that's, like, after Higurashi. Higurashi is one of uh, Yukishi's old, uh, like, uh, first um, uh, stories and all that. So, who knows what this story will have to offer. But, well, I have been told that this is a murder mystery. So, my mind right now is concocting an idea that maybe there is a company that keeps piling stuff right here, mostly because they want to hide the murder that happened like a long time ago. They're hiding it by piling all sorts of garbage on top of it so that nobody would ever be able to, like, dig themselves into finding them that murdered person, or arm. So, that's an idea of mine, but... You know, there's no evidence, it's just it's just random thought that I have it in my mind. Who knows. There's no way she would be able to do that with her slender arms. A chain? 
If Rena gave up on this Colonel Randy, she should probably start devising a plan to steal the one in front of the store. As Rena's guardian, I won't allow her to sully her hands with crime. Rena blushed again, but this time I left it alone. The pile was enormous. Also, the more days we wasted, the more likely another illegal dumping would occur. If it got buried any deeper, there would be nothing that could be done. Alright. Alright. Ah, you don't know that, Keiichi. Pulling out scraps, bending them, tossing them aside. I quickly became covered in sweat and dust. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we have much to do right now. Anyway, flying objects drew beautiful arcs across the twilight sky, one after another. Like maybe we can find some other, some other cool stuff around here, not just Colonel Randy. Damn it! No matter how much I throw out, there was still more. Even though I could see Colonel Randy right there, after Grant standing like that in front of Rena, I felt frantic because of how little I had progressed. Rena began sputtering and turned a bit red. Oops. I meant to say I was trying my best so as to keep her from becoming a criminal. That is another thing. Oh well. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Is that a... A toy motorcycle? I sprawled on my back over the grassy slope. Rena patted her handkerchief against my forehead. It felt pretty nice. Leaving the handkerchief on my forehead, Rena took off running. Well, I didn't. Might as well. The cries of Higurashi gently cooled the air. Mmm, the Higurashis. After I was certain that Rena was gone, I picked myself up and headed towards what I've discovered earlier. That was a garbage pile of magazines and newspapers bound up in twine. Ooh, more newspapers! Yes, unless I'm mistaken. I believe it was around here. There it was. They were bound stacks of not so reputable tabloids. And they were stacked chronologically, going back quite a few years. It was quite a disturbing incident. They still haven't found one of the arms. If it was just as Tomitake-san said, then undoubtedly there will be mention of the murder. These are troubled times. There is no end to these sickening incidents. There's a large part of society drawn in by these incidents as well. So it had to be recorded. Yeah. Where there is an incident, there's always going to be some vultures, or hunters, that will want to learn about it. And that includes me! <laughs> I unfastened the packages and opened the rain-soaked pages carefully, looking over the table of contents. Mm, not here. Next one. Not here. Next one. It's hard to search since I didn't know when it happened. I didn't know who the perpetrator or the victim was either. I only knew it had happened here. I looked up every so often, checking to see if Rena had come back or not. I wouldn't want her to see me gawking at a dirty magazine, but... Well, it wasn't just that. <laughs> Both Rena and Mion said they didn't know. But 
it had happened. Without a doubt. That and uh, Mion talked as if she experienced most of this, maybe, I'm not sure. Like, no doubt Mion uh, looks like she lived here a lot longer than, than Keiichi and uh, Rena. Like, Keiichi has been here for like a month, Rena has been here for like a year. The others probably lived here like a lot longer. So, maybe they would know. As long as Tomitake-san was alive. And if both Rena and Neon... Ah, uh, yeah, there was! But they had just said that, they wouldn't have gone so hung up on it. An incident that neither Rena nor Neon wished to talk about. Trying to uncover it after they tried to conceal it out of good intentions. That made me feel like I was acting against my friends. Hmm. Hinamazawa damn worker Lynching. Murdered by dismemberment. Here it is. The featured article was in the back and it seemed that there was a photograph in color pages of the front. The pages of the featured article were stuck together and weren't easy to open. When I could return at any moment, feeling rushed, I gave up and opened the photograph page. The police investigators were carrying a body bag and newspaper reporters were all bathing it in the camera flashes. The image was blurry and hard to understand, but I could definitely make out the headlines. A tragic nightmare at the Hinamizawa construction site, lynching and murder slash dismemberment. The victim was a site foreman. He had assaulted his assailants daily with an explosive backlash from his daily actions. Horrible image to see the site foreman as it happened. It really did happen. He seen the details were on the next page. I turned the page without pausing. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I guess when thinking about this, that Tomitake person from before, maybe. Maybe he is a hunter as well. He is uh, searching uh, for um, for what happened here. When it was the assailants butchered the victim's body with hatchets and pickaxes, then used the next to split the cadaver into six pieces: head, arm, legs, and torso. I could just understand from the headline that it was just too terrible. An instant. Normally a lynching is just assault and murder, right? This member with wood hatches and pickaxes? It was a lynching. It was a merciless killing to the letter. A brutal murder. Maybe even torture to the point of murder. Hmm. Done by a group of people. With hatchets. With pickaxes. With a hatchet. Hey there, Rena. Rena dropped the hatchet she was holding on the grass after being stolen by my voice. Hatchet? What the fuck are you doing with the hatchet in your in your in your hand? Oh. <laughs> okay, so that's your explanation. Hmm. Rena fluttered her arms in a panic, continuing to explain and apologize. It seemed I'd been glaring at her pretty intensely. Night was drawing close. I was pretty worn out. Anyone hurt to do the rest tomorrow? Hmm. 
何しょんぼりしてるんだよ明日にはランディ君が掘り出せるんだぜそうだよね<笑>早くランディ君を持ち帰りしたい We both knew that it was useless to apologize any more than that. I quenched my first with a barley I quenched my first with a barley tea ran abroad and wiped off the sweat that had not gone cold. I took the path to head off. I felt quite guilty about the tablet wrapped up in my jacket. Alright, well, let's see. What do we have here? The Hinamizawa Dam project. Hmm. Are we gonna learn some more stuff about、uh, about the dam in the newspapers? Hmm. October 1975. Hmm. In accordance with the Prime Minister's bulletin number X, Hinamizawa's electrical development master plan was announced. The vast scope of the projected Hinamizawa Dam was to have an incredibly heavy impact on the village of Hinamizawa. The area to be flooded by the Hinamizawa Dam will include the five areas of Hinamizawa Takatsudo, Kyotsu, Matsumoto, and Yagochi. Areas to be flooded by the dam. The submerged area would include. 291 houses. Population 1251. One elementary school, one middle school, one post office, one agricultural cooperative, one forestry department lumber yard, five shrines, two temples, and one fishery. All these communal, cultural, agricultural areas and places of worship. Were to be indefinitely submerged at the bottom of the artificial lake basin. What the fuck? Man, it's much worse than I thought of. I thought they were talking about <clears throat> first would be the dam, and there would be like the, the factories like around Hinamizawa that would pollute the place. No, they're really, really thinking of submerging the areas, like straight up, straight to the point. Jesus. For a second, the hundreds of years that our ancestors poured their blood and sweat into this fertile, resource rich land was just too painful to bear. All the residents having homes that were to be submerged banded together and created an, the Onigafuchi Guardians. Onigafuchi. The dam project was halted, and petitions to halt the plan were circulated. The citizens sought peaceful negotiations. But the government and its puppet company, X, openly refused. Performing unspeakable, heinous acts, they squashed the democratic actions of the villagers. But the villagers did not falter. Instead, they banded together even more closely and steeled their resolve to protect their homes to the death. Yeah, you do that. You do that, villagers. The continuation of that frightening Hinamizawa dam construction project is still stalled as of today. The villagers understand that the stalling was caused by sublime power for u n i t y And they understand that this fearsome plan has not yet been fully withdrawn. The Onigafuchi, the Onigafuchi guardians have been dissolved after it did its part. But the feelings of unity it garnered have not yet been extinguished. As long as that passion resides in the hearts of the residents, They'll be able to confront whoever next decides to sink their homes into a lake basin. o n i g a f u c h i Guardians Committee Chairman, Kiichiro Kimiyoshi. Hmm. Alright. Well, that's good. Special tabloid report. Okay. Let's read some more stuff around here. Nightmare Befalls the Hinamizawa Dam. Lynching and murder slash dismemberment. 
On X day of X month in X prefecture at the Hinamizawa Dam construction work site in Shishibone city, a bone chillingly gruesome murder such as Even though this case has shocked the archipelago, the police will give no details on the case. Exactly what happened at the Hinamizawa Dam? They probably didn't mean to kill him at first. But. As the victim resisted by swinging an out of shovel, the rest of the perpetrators armed themselves in return, and it quickly escalated to homicide. So said the aforementioned investigator A. After this bloody tragedy was over, they were left with a body which nobody could have mistaken as alive. X son had tormented the suspects daily with his rough behavior. At first it was meant to be payback. All the perpetrators were horrified by their deed, and one even turned himself in to the police. It was the de facto leader of this group, X, who suggested hiding the body. Reluctantly at first, they soon began to think they did not wish to be caught. The construction site had numerous places to hide the body with six people. They were originally supposed to hide the body and leave the air but the de facto leader feared that the consciences of the other five wouldn't be able to bear the burden, and came up with a horrifying method to keep them from turning him into the police. Hmm? He devised the heinous method of splitting up the body among them and making each of them responsible for hiding a piece. X had turned a simple manslaughter into a gruesome dismemberment, Unforcibly evolved each perpetrator in order to create a sense of unity between them. Okay, I see. So that's why they couldn't find that one arm. Because it was said in that other newspaper that there was one other person, one last person that was missing. And that last person would have the last uh, piece of the human. Each one participated. But what does this mean? Person A spoke out reluctantly. X had ordered each and every one of them to dissect the piece for themselves. They were hesitant at first, but nobody refused. In for a penny, in for a pound, was what it meant. Thus, an unimaginable bloody ceremony began. The perpetrators wept and vomited as they performed the gruesome task. There was one person who stubbornly refused, but X threatened them, saying nothing would change if someone else ended up dead, and he gave up in his objections. Jesus. But X's plan collapsed in a span of one night. X, who had refused to dissect the corpse until the last moment, had broken down into tears at the hospital, where he was being treated for an injury. Sustained during the scuffle and confessed. Ah, I see. Because there was one detail in that other newspaper that kind of confused me a little bit. Like, uh, like it had something to do with the hospital. Like, the hospital was mentioned. Why the hospital? Well, apparently one of the suspects was uh, being treated for an injury right over here. That happened at that at that point in night, and they confessed like right there. The criminals were arrested one after the other, but the de facto leader's XX whereabouts are still unknown. Also, the right arm hidden by X has yet to be found. Yeah, basically. Despite an ongoing search, this horrible individual has so far managed to elude the law enforcement. What could the police be doing? It appears that X had said he was going to throw the body, the right arm, into the swamp. Mm, so it's the right arm. X's car was discovered abandoned near the swamp, but there were no clues to his whereabouts. X didn't trust his companions. One cannot deny the possibility that he had expected his companions to confess to the police and used his car as a decoy. Mm. Of course, I doubt that theory. 
since he has no car, one would expect him to have a limited area to which he could have escaped to. But within the station there were rumors going around that he had accidentally slipped and drowned in a swamp when he went to throw away the body. To the locals, that swamp is believed to be bottomless. It's known as Onigafuchi, the Demon's Abyss, and it's said that the bottom of the swamp is connected to the hellish world of demons. Ooh. Mmm, spicy. The atrocious demon from hell that was X. Could it be that he had returned to hell through the swamp? The GG Dragon, bringer of luck and fortune. Prosperous future. Ladies leaping into your arms, business success, promotions, ambition, protection from harm. Not just with pachinko and horse races, right? not with just pachinko and horse races, but business and even love. Guaranteed, or your money back. G Jean Dragon Bracelet DX, yes. One Piece! 27,800 yen. Hmm. I wonder if it's still available after all these years. But yeah, hmm. the GG, so uh, I mean, uh, the Onigafuchi Swamp. Be interesting. I wonder if it's, uh, I wonder if it's close to Hinamizawa. That could be a good uh, next destination that we could uh, search. The function of the school as an educational facility is very questionable. Our PE class is exceptionally disorganized. The only things we do together are the warm-ups at the start. The teacher is gonna be there after that. All we do is play it together, basically. Hmm. Ah. We're gonna be having the gym session episode, eh? All the little kids were gallivanting about. Well, they certainly are being active. They might be getting plenty of exercises, but... Okay. I do have to talk about this technical stuff right over here a little bit. Um, like, the audio is just... Is being really, really weird. I don't think that the game is changing. It's just that, well... At the beginning of each uh, session, I changed the volume to really, 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 really low. You know. And I get the feeling that now, when I change it to the same volume as I always do, it's much lower than last time. And sometimes it's just okay. So now I have to raise the volume a little bit higher. And that is something that I noticed uh, during, um, during uh, like, the editing, like, the editing phase. Like... Uh, the raw footage which was much lower in volume than, than the rest, so I had to balance things out. <sighs> that is, like, when it comes to editing, like, the sound uh, levels, uh, that is what uh, gives me, like, not the biggest troubles, but it just, it's just, it just makes me anxious when it comes to, um, volume and such. Like, a part of me makes me think that, uh, like, I'm not, like, I'm not realizing the mistakes that I'm doing with these volume changes and such, and that I am making things worse or something like that, that I don't hear it properly. So, let me know if you have, like, s like, <laughs> sound issues, ladies and gents. Not in the po like, uh, the volume changes if it's, if it's apparent or not. L like, let me know. <laughs> Because I get the feeling that the sound, like the music and the sound effects are going to be very important for this because, well, it's a horror visual novel. And from what I heard, this was also considered a sound novel, which I don't think I've experienced that kind of visual novel before. But nonetheless, it, like, it, it is a horror visual novel. Sounds are more than likely going to be important in this as well to create the atmosphere and such, so that's something that I'm going to have to toy with. Hmm. 
Like right now, the sound volume volume is like very, very good. Before though, I barely was able to hear like the sounds while I was reading the newspaper. The Board of Education probably completely forgot about this school. Neon hurled and crossed our arms hollowly, surveying the area. I quipped without missing a beat. Alright. <laughs> it just started with that. It was quite the adorable choice to make after playing it up so much. ノルマな圭一さんは意の一番に鬼ですの。僕だって負けませんです。レナも頑張るもの。今日は負けないぞ。なんでお前らそんなにやる気満々なんだよ。海賊大三条。ゲームは絶対に楽しく参加しなければなら
regardless. Uh, yeah. Keiichi, you are forgetting the fact that you are in a anime. In a visual novel at that, so... Those kinds of rules don't apply. Regardless, Mion and Satoko looked like they were aiming for victory. Erena was looking at me as if hitting my disadvantage. <laughs> my yell echoed across the school grounds. <laughs> okay, like each time uh, Keiichi screams, it reminds me of Kazuma. These were the rules. Anyone who was able to evade being tagged before the bell was a winner. But we didn't switch who it was it. The ones who were tagged by it also became it. Okay, so the number of people who were it could increase exponentially. The end game would become a hell of siege. Okay. なんでそんな怖いこと言うんだろう。だろう。レナを捕まえたら生きたままお腹を食い破ってやるからな。いや、いやだよ、ケイチ君。そんなのや。リカちゃん placed her hand on Lena's head as she panted. 大丈夫です。ケイチに食われる前に僕が優しく食べてあげますです。yeah. <laughs> okay. Both Mion and I nodded deeply. Humu, humu. Oh, rock, paper, scissors. It's your Jugio I have no idea which grade level they're coming from. Well, you gotta take into account Rika and Satoko. Rock! Huh? I was bewildered by the sudden question. I knew a Japanese word? What? <laughs> and Mion repeated it. Oh. I forgot about that as well. I don't know. Okay, I, I think, uh, I guess I was, I was thinking of English. Roku makes me think of rock. But actually, is that, is that good as well? I don't know. Uh, third, third last letter in the, uh. Damn it. Uh, the... Satoko cut herself off before finishing the answer. Uh, uh, my god. I gotta get the, uh, I gotta get this right. I cannot lose to, to Satoko here. I see. It's quite a lewd question. <laughs> but, but, I, but I'm not I'm not lewd enough. Like sometimes I make some perverted jokes and all that, but you know. Are you talking about pee pee? No. She's mine. She's an annoying little brat, but I love her. If I didn't nip it in the bud, she really might have tried to take her home. Mion's pursuit was relentless, making Satoko stammer. Huh? 
Yeah. Well, those were a bit surprised, but I already got you on the unexpected answer. Uh, I see. That certainly is what that means. That could have been awkward. I wonder what I would have done in Satoko's position. I'll probably get ticked off and just blurt out you know what at the top of my lungs. I wouldn't want you as an enemy, Yon Sonozaki. Heck no, goodness, you were born a girl. Eh, if you were a boy, you'd probably be a perverted asshole. Yeah, well, try and try and catch me, you little peep squeak. Seems like she's raring to go. Yeah. Unless you're gonna have trouble counting, Satoko. <laughs> Satoko grabbed a stick in a panic and began drawing a cake in fractions on the ground. And just as I finished giving the word problem, Mio shot it. On Mio's signal, everyone but Satoko scattered. Alright, Ikuzo! Satoko had already lost the moment she started working it out. She's eating it all, so of course there's nothing left on the plate. Everyone dashed off in the direction they thought was best. Knowing that they on the land, they probably headed right to the best parts. Man, it was obvious I was at a disadvantage. At a time like this, it would have been more effective to go along with those trained and survival skills. Like Mio, for example. The fact that I didn't realize it at the start of the game probably hurt my chances. Glancing back over the school grounds, I saw Satoko just rising off the start. She was really, really mad. <laughs> she got tripped up on such a dumb question. Alrighty then. I stood at one of the corners of the school. I had clear silence in two directions, and we'll probably have a good response time if any zombies started closing in. Yeah. I mean, like, do, doing all this, all this stuff at school. Like, I'm attending school, I'm, like, attending clubs and games, and now, now I'm playing tag here with the kids. Jesus. For the time being, I caught my breath and focused on what I was trained to think during club activities yesterday. Now think calmly, Keiichi Maebara. If I was it, what would I do? Increasing my numbers would be the shortcut to victory. Then going after the weakest player first is the obvious plan of attack. Meaning... Me! Yeah, Satoko would think Keiichi is the weakest one. But of course, what would be the best method to track me down? Footprints or smell, or maybe some type of trail. Hmm. If I could craftily hide my tracks, then there would be no trail for Satoko to follow. Well, I was no detective. Are you going to be able to do that kind of thing in an amateur game like this? Like, I don't know, try to create like some obvious looking footprints, like foot tracks with your shoes on the ground. Like, up until one point, and then just go backwards, like following those same footprints and then hide somewhere. Just so that they wouldn't think of uh, looking uh, like in the middle of the footprints. Trying to explain this to the best of my abilities over here, but you get what I mean, right? Like the animal survival thing that I've heard of before. What the heck? 
Did zombies hunt their prey by asking nicely where they went? Tomitakun and Okamura-kun pointed to the location where I was hiding. Well, are they like... Construction workers or something like that? Because, you know, I heard from somebody that... Okay, this building that we're in, like the school building... It was still used by some workers. It's not an abandoned uh, building. Like, some rooms are gonna be used for the kids, while the other rooms are still gonna be used by some workers. At least that's what I've uh, that's what I've seen. After confirming she was headed in this direction, I abandoned my position. It wasn't easy to hide myself with all those little kids running around as they pleased. It was becoming even more obvious that I was at a disadvantage from not being familiar with these surroundings. If that's how it was going to be, then to confront this intelligence gathering zombie, I just counter it in a similar vein. I approached some girls playing with a ball. <laughs> I stopped the girls as they turned to run off. Mion? <laughs> I am quite the schemer, if I do say so myself. If things went well, then Satoko and Mion would run into each other at the gate. Ah, so you're gonna try and um, make someone else lose in the process. It would put me at a disadvantage if more people were it. But this was Mion we were talking about. She'd figured out a way to escape. Ah. Uh, mm, yeah. Because if, if, if Mion were to be caught, then... Well, it would be bad news bears. But Mion, out of all people, would be probably the best at escaping situations. You'd put, like, the best player to distract the zombie. That was just fine. As long as it bought me more time. <laughs> that is zombie. Mion and Satoko. In the palm of my hand! Having my fill of playing the con man, I looked for a place to hide. Alright. If you think about it logically, I only bought myself a scant amount of time. And it might even come back to bite me. Once it became apparent I'd started spreading false information through messengers, I could end up being the recipient of those messages. <laughs> well, as long as you don't believe them. So I thought we would probably ask the messengers to help her look for me. That would mean there will be more zombies than participants in the game. Well, that's not fair. They cannot participate, though. The virus that was brought about by my mischief could cause an epidemic. All my classmates would transform into zombies and would only be searching for me. Is there, like, a cemetery around uh, Hinamizo? There probably has to be. <laughs> like, a part of... Uh... A part of uh, this horror story we're talking about is uh, dealing with zombies and all that. This tactic. This tactic might backfire horribly. While trembling in the fall of the impending dawn of the dead, I began searching for a safe house. I mean, let me think, like, is Evil Dead, like, um... In what year did Evil Dead, uh, appear? Okay, well, Evil Dead 2, the movie that I watched was from 1987. Like, one year after after Dr. Njima incident. Hmm. But what about Evil Dead 1? I think it was much, much, much earlier. 1981, okay. Okay, there is something to work with there. After climbing up the roof, I held my breath. Man, the roof. It wasn't a bad place to hold out. Not only did I have a good line of sight, but if necessary, I could jump off in three different directions to escape. That and... Uh, well, I don't know how how agile slash acrobatic Satoko is. Like, she is very small. I don't know if she's able to climb the building the same way you do, Keiichi. So, I'll just stay there and just... Uh, and just um, uh, not let Satoko get to you. It would be probably if someone like, say, Mion or Rena would be able to get up there. I don't know. It was getting rowdy down there. The lower grades were running around below the shed. God damn it. 
Keiichi was right. Like, Satoko uh, managed to convert some girls to become zombies. That was definitely a lie. And the word gate, the same one I used, gave a hint for revenge. Uh, yeah, well, imagine if that actually happened. <laughs> Maybe his dad truly is at the gate, but we don't have time for that. It's a life and death situation, so Mion was behind us. I'm still keeping one step ahead of the game. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's the bad thing. Mion would uh, would immediately realize that she was tricked, and chances are very high that if you were to think of someone else as a schemer, you would be Keiichi. Keiichi is that type of person as well. I mean, he truly is. He is scheming. Mion would know that, so she would know that Keiichi is the one responsible for this. So, of course, Mion would be would be the one to do this exact same trick. Jesus. Ah, shit. Okay, it's official. <laughs> this is the bad ending. They caught Keiichi. They caught uh, the perpetrator of, uh, of uh, the dismemberment. <laughs> Anything goes now. Hey, that's not true. Uh -oh. yeah. yeah, it could be possible. Who are they talking about? They were talking about you, Cosma. No way I would do that. Yeah! This was your doing, Mion! Calm down, Keiichi Maebara. This is Mion's battle tactic to flush me out. Just hold on. If my underclassmen thought about it logically, they would know it's all nonsense. But small kids don't think about things logically. To them, all those things were true, so they all chuckled together while looking for me. Yeah, it seems that your reputation is at uh, stake here, Keiichi. Give up early to save your reputation or win. <laughs> I win, Mion. It's my victory. <laughs> Wiping unrelenting tears away, I felt intoxicated by my own victory. <laughs> the cost of beating Mion had too high a price. Ugh. Oh, someone passed below. That's Rena and Rika chan. Rika chan was still a bit late. I'm trying to get a lot of work. <laughs> Mion? Okay, so she also got caught? That or she doesn't really give a fuck. She can get caught. Uh, Mion will probably enjoy uh, trying to catch Keiichi more than her being the one to escape. Be. She become it because of my low strategy? It's confirmed that Mion was behind this well this message war. Then mm, this wasn't good. Around hearing that, I breathed a sigh of relief. While Rena was slumped on the ground, breathing heavily, Rika chan had started creeping up to her. Riga-chan doesn't normally make noise when she talks, but it's strange. It can be... No... Rika! Rika-chan? What's 
I've never seen Rika chan smile so quickly before. Oh no. Maybe she did get caught. Although it kinda of depends if she was caught on purpose or not. Hmm. When I was pressed against the wall and Rikachan lurched forward with both arms out, just like a zombie. When I quacked with her back pushed up against the wall. That's quite a surreal scene of horror. And this was the horror all along. Like one of those zombie breakout videos you'd see. Videos? 1983? Well... Of course, there, there is television. I don't know about videos, though. Maybe VHS? At that moment, Rena's eyes met mine. <laughs> Zombie Rikachan turned 180 degrees. Exorcist style and glared at me. <laughs> Mion popped up from behind a cinder block wall around the garbage dump, also seeing where I was. My position was always advantageous when there was one zombie. Being surrounded was not as good. I could tell that Satoko was rushing my way. Cinderi Kachan had let Rena escape. And now she was burying her fangs in my direction. <laughs> No.